I read an article in the jazz magazine, and it was about, about three drummers, and the drummers were Elvin Jones and Tony Williams and Milford Graves. And this sounded very interesting, so I thought I would start playing drums. So that's how I started. I read this article. And then I then a friend of mine and I got a record of these people, of these various people, and I liked the free jazz thing. So I thought I would start trying to play that. But of course it was really difficult. I mean but I used to just play along with Thelonious Monk LPs, you know in those days. Uh, and then um, I'd been playing for four or five years and then I met some people in South End who played free stuff or well, they were much more about um, much more about but one of them I played at the Middle Earth those sort of things so it was like hippie stuff I like playing live. I think there's something nice about playing live. I don't, I really, I like playing anywhere, but you know, I do like playing live. It's nice playing, I'm playing playing the audience. It's good, as long as it's not too big. You know, 30 to 70 is about the right size, I think, for this sort of music. Because I like to play acoustically, really. I couldn't find a kit that was as small as I wanted it. So in the end, I went to this place, Tea Drums, which is up in Stroud somewhere. It's not very far from Bristol. And uh, the bloke there made them for me, to my sizes. So, you know, the bass drum's 16 by 11, which is even small for a tonto. And uh, so they're tiny drums. And uh, when I first got it, my, my son got me out of the kitchen and he just pointed and laughed. You know. So funny how how what a sweet, tiny drum kit. How can it be so small? But of course it looks bigger because it's got so many symbols around it. You know, and it makes perfectly a reasonable sound. You know, I hoped it'd be easier to carry, which I suppose it is, but it's not that easy to carry. Really. I, I've had that symbol since 1968, and I bought it from a friend of mine who you know was a student friend of mine, and he was a drummer as well. But his father was a drummer, and that symbol was his drum. That was his father's symbol he bought before the war. One is, is a 1970 paste that I bought from my friend Trevor Taylor. And that one is a 1974 paste that also came from Trevor Taylor. That's a case origin which I've had since 2001 and you know I've had symbols for a long time. I just keep moving them around. I don't know when I've got that, I just seem to hate it forever. It's a 12 inch soldier. I, these these ones around here, this is it's interesting because you can just people don't put a symbol there very often, so I put it there so I can get all these different patterns here. So this this is a flat ride symbol, so it's a really nice soft sound with not many overtones. So you get a nice crisp clear sound, and then you can you know go round here and then use this one for accents and then the splash symbol. I've just started using because I thought it was a good idea. Today's session, today's session's been, you know, it's really, really pleasant. I mean, I, it's funny because you play with different people and you can play in a, di you play in a completely different way. It's interesting when you get with people you haven't played before and you start playing because it does alter what you do. And Hugh was saying to me earlier, well, that didn't, didn't, didn't sound like you at all. And I thought, well, that's because I'm playing with a different guitarist. It's very nice. And I was doing that sort of, you know, ECM thing earlier with, you know, yeah, which was nice and soft, but I don't generally, I suppose I don't generally get an opportunity to play that sort of thing. Once I left university, um, I knew a couple of the people who were in uh, the Seedbed Orchestra, including David Mowen, uh, who so I, I spoke to them and said I'd be interested in doing that and this was a big band organised by Keith Tippett basically playing Keith Tippett's uh, pieces and some written by members of the band and so I said that 
I'd be happy to play double bass with him. So I'd never really played double bass at all. I was a bass guitarist, uh, so I thought I'd, li I'd like to play double bass. And started uh, playing double bass, um, joined that band, and basically transferred what I knew on bass guitar onto, onto double bass. One of the great attractions of uh, improvised music is it's never the same twice. Uh, and you can play with people that you haven't played with before, and you find ways of communicating, you find, you find common ground uh, with people, and uh, you change a little bit, they change toward, towards you. Um, and there's, if in a trio like we've been playing in today, there's a three-way dynamic. Sometimes when there's more people, it becomes dynamic. So it's not people just playing their own particular way and playing their normal stuff. You try and, and develop. People still retain their character, and they're still a, you can still see their particular way of doing it, but you have to try and work, work as a team and, uh, and, and fit together, and I think that's what's happened today. So... I think there's certain things that, you know, everybody's running back on and they've tried to uh, find ways of communicating with, e with each other. Um, so I, I think there's some good stuff there. There were, there were a couple of things where we were finding our feet, um, but, but, but there's been some very good moments uh, uh, as well. Now, that's one of the attractions uh, of improvised music. When it's good, it's unexpectedly good. And you, and you think, cool, that, that's really, that's great. Um, and, and it takes you a little bit higher than sort of other forms of music because you think, cool, what's going on here? <laughs>